Hi, it's Lel from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today it's going to be super exciting. I don't know if you've got those sort of mid-century modern bits of glass, a bit of mirror, nothing really exciting about it at home and you want to completely change the look of it. You want to give it such an upgrade. Um, I'm going to show you today how to take a pretty bog standard piece of furniture and make it into a piece of folk art. Before we start today, I am going to tr be trialling throughout this video some new paint. Um, I'm thinking of looking at other paints and I'm trying. The reason why I was attracted to this paint was it's co the colours. The colours are amazing. And today it's called Jubilee and it's from Guild Lane. And today I'm going to be, I'm not paid to say this. This is just what I, and this is just what I want to do. This is one of the colours that I'm going to be using today. And that's that's called Oxford Ochre. I mean, look at the colour of that. And this one here is called Verdigris. I'm hoping you can see it. Yeah. So what I've done is I've got the full range, not in the large tins, in these ones. I've got the full range of all the small ones to trial and test out because obviously I want to know. This one is um, seals itself, so you don't need a sealer on top of it, which is fabulous. I mean, that cuts down quite a lot of time for me as well. So, I'm, I'm, you know, I can always go back and apply dark wax, like wax, whatever I want on top of it, but it's self-sealing. It's self-leveling, which is not a paint I usually use, but I can, you know, work with it the way I want to work with it. Well, we'll see if I can work with it the way I want to work with it. It's not chalk-based. It's an acrylic-based or mineral-based uh, paint. Um, it comes in a myriad of different colours and I know I'm um, talking to Jubilee that they're going to be bringing out more colours so that's even more exciting and we would need to know if it blends well we need to know how it works with other colours and so there's this is the sort of paint chart there's loads of colours um, which I'm really impressed with I, I, I just love them so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to trial out their paint and they also sent, sent me some fabulous new brushes as well. So we'll give those a run out too. We can, we can be the judge of that at the end. So now I'm going to get Martin to kind of scan up and down this. I'm going to scooch out the way to, because the reason why I kind of walk around on this piece is going to be incredibly difficult is it is full of glass, glass fronted. And at the back, it's got mirrors, which means that, and it's a bit of an optical illusion because it's a corner unit. But when you look in it, it looks square, but it's actually a corner unit. And when the glass gets removed and everything, we'll, we'll know better. So um, I'm going to get Martin to show you the piece. And while Martin's showing you, I'm just going to try and talk through what my sort of vision is for it. So it's pretty bog standard at the bottom. Cupboard, it's solid. It's a heavy piece of furniture. It is really well made. I'm going to remove the handles. And that's the corner cupboard inside. And the top half has this really thick, heavy, etched glass. And what I'm going to get Martin to do is, I'm going to get Martin to remove this glass and he is going to cut me panels on the CNC with a full cart cutout, or, or, or at least that's the plan. Um, you don't have to do this at home. If you can't do that, you could just take the glass out and just put wood behind it and stencil it and stamp it. Um, or you could do, drill a pilot hole in a piece of wood and cut out a very simple template if you were going to do it, but that'll become more apparent when we, as we move on. So the inside is full of glass, and you can see Martin. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's got a light at the top, um, and I want to keep the light so that when I plug it in the cutouts that we put on the doors here, you'll be able to see. But as I said, it's going to become more apparent. There's quite a lot of things to do to this. So while Martin's taking the doors off and taking the doors over to the workshop to put the panels in and has removed the glass, I'm going to be painting the carcass. So I'm going to be removing the hardware and things for that. So we'll get on. So I'm starting with the Oxford Ochre in the Jubilee range. And I'm going to paint. What my sort of plan is, is I'm going to do this like three different colours. So there's going to be a sort of the Odeneal, or sorry, Verdigris is going to be there and the panels are going to be different colours. So this is just block painting. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to block paint it. I need to... Oh. 
I don't know if you can see the coverage, but it's very slick. I should have this piece on something actually, this is not how to do it, but. And this, this is one coat. One coat. So, so far, I have to start using it, but so far I'm quite impressed. I should have this piece on somewhere. Um, it looks nice, it's going on lovely, it's very, very smooth to work with. Um, yeah, it's nice. So I'm going to do this yellow, this band here as well, yellow. So yeah, nice coverage. So I'm going to go on, and I'm going to do two coats of my different bands of colour and then I'll come back and talk about what I've done. Did what I said I was going to do. Two coats of the yellow, the green and the red. Now the red I've put a blend in and all I've done is I've used, I'm still not quite right with the colours, uh, do you believe? So pillar box red into the centre with um, murray red, one coat of murray red and pillar box red in the centre but I'm going to show you that blend now I didn't just go on without you so the whole piece has been coated twice and what we've done is we've put some paper over the mirrors right now because it's freaking us out and we're not quite sure whether we're keeping them in or we're not keeping them in however that brings me to the next part Martin has cut me out my panels so these here are the panels that are going to go into the doors and we're going to do a sort of Indian folk art sort of theme on this piece. So this is the beginning of it. So I'm just going to show you just down on the ground here. It's probably not the best place to put it, but I'll kind of start just so you get an idea of what I did. So this is the Murray Red that I was talking about. And basically, this is how I did the door. I just painted the whole thing. Now I'm, I'm going to have to kind of like get a smaller brush and go in between. Um, because I wanted to know whether this paint would blend um, without having the, the top coat and because that's quite important for me, you know, for what for what I do. So um, just get a little bit more colour on and we'll I'll show you. I'm going to have to flip it over and do both sides. So um, I'm just doing it roughly enough for you for camera. So so see that was I'll get all that in a minute. See that was the, the door and all I did was I got the, the pillar box red and I just, because these are small pots, I, I kind of did this where I wanted to lighten it up and went back over and just blended it in and it blends, not a, not a problem. So that's Another thing in the in the favour of this paint, the coverage I've had with two coats is absolutely perfect. It's already top coated, so I'm quite tough with that. And that's how I blend them. So I'm just going to go on and I'm going to paint both my panels from a door inside all these. I'm going to get a different brush for this because this is not the brush for it. But um, that's how I did the blend. Okay, so the panels are drying. And what we're going to do is we're going to start giving this some oomph. So I have various uh, redesigned by Prima stamps here and what I'll do is I'll get Martin to list which stamps, which stamp sets I've used in the description box. Is that okay Martin? Yeah. <laughs> um, just so you know what I've used. So this is the first one that I'm going to be using. I think this might be from Tribal Elements but I'm not entirely sure. I have this one from Bohemian Dreamer with the one with the elephant on. I have this one, this is also from Bohemian Dreamer, and this one, and this one. And I've got some others here that I brought out um, to see if they might work, but some of them are a little bit too not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start um, by using this colour here to stamp onto this door here so that this works with this. 
So, and I'm going to use this one here. So I'm just going to set up and Martin will get, you know, the cameras behind me so you can see me doing this and doing rounded doors. So here's my stamp, here's my roller. I've offloaded it onto a piece of card beside me where I can work. And I'm just going to, now normally I would say I'm looking for a sort of kind of, um, you know, distressed look, but this time I want it to come out, you know, I do want it all kind of like to be there. So I'm taking a little bit more time to make sure that my whole of my stamp is coated with this paint like that. Now, there's a dip here where this goes down, so I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start underneath here like that. When your stamp's on, be careful that you don't shift it or move it. And then it's just a process of going round the whole piece, making sure that you've touched it all. Keeping one hand, always keeping it straight and flat and stopping it from shifting the other hand. So, let's see how this looks on here. And I'm going to take my roller again and do exactly the same thing. And I'm going to try my utmost to line that up if I can. So you've seen me before just stampy crazy and not you know being too because I've got multiple layers but because this is a nice tidy finish I'm doing nice tidy stamping make sure that I've pushed it all in and take that one off and I think we've probably got another maybe twice to go making sure that you Get it all on your stamp. And off we go again. Whoa, there's a shift there. Might be a little bit mucky under here when I lift it up. Let's hope that my detail that I'm going to put on top will cover up that little boo boo. There we go, and pulling that off again, and now, now we have a, a conundrum. So this time, what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to ink up this part here, but what I am going to do is, I'm just going to get a clean makeup sponge. I'm going to run across the, the way I think it's going to go, and I'm going to get a clean makeup sponge. And just, in fact, a paint rag would probably be better just to take the paint off. I don't want it to come past there. And do you know what I'm going to do for extra special? I'm just going to whack a piece of whacking, a masking tape over there as well so that I know that it's not going to go on it. Better safe than sorry. You know what? Since I've done that now, I can afford to be a little bit more generous with my paint. <laughs> I'm going to do this to the other side of the door as well. Um. So you know that's what I'm going to repeat there. There's no point in me keeping on showing you the same thing. So next we're going to stamp on here. Like, like that. And I'm just going to take that off now too. So that's our panel stamped, yeah? This part. I have this one quite fine and it's a little bit shorter than than this panel here you know it's a little bit 
shorter than it so I'm wondering whether I might just bring it in I think I'm just going to bring it in over that that edge just gets rid of that as well and it makes it look a little bit so that's what I'm going to do so I line it up on this edge here really so my fingernails when I get to this edge I'll know when I'll put my stamp down that that's where it's got to go that's the theory anyway now for this one I'm going to be using um the acrylic gilding enamel um from Guild Lane so it's another new product that I'm trying never tried this one either so I've given it a good shake got a little makeup sponge just going to use it off the lid, offload, and then just make sure that my stamp has plenty of ink on it. Let's just, just want to go over that one more time because. Now I'm used to chalk paint and when you stamp on chalk paint it's not slidey, um, it, the chalk paint has kind of teeth and this is a slidey for me and this is slidey for me so let's hope that this isn't a slidey mess. That was a disclaimer. And again, make sure you touch all of your stamp with all your fingers and hands. Try not to shift and remove. Now, in that light, is that going to be bright enough? I'm not entirely sure whether that's going to show up enough on this, but I think it would show up lovely on the red. Do you know what we're going to do? We just kind of wipe that away. There we go. Just like that. And we'll try, we'll do this band up here instead with it. And I'll change my colour in a minute. Yeah, that's what we'll do. And that just finishes off that gap for me as well, which I wasn't exactly enjoying. So, and this way I'll just line that up with that line this time. I think it's just too similar it to show up and I'm not, I'm not I'd rather have it a bit more quick in your face yeah that's very fine look how neat that is that's really nice now I don't need all of this for this one so I'm just gonna wing it but this is where I want to stop I just kind of bend it up Make sure you've touched it all and pull it off. Done. See if I can. You shouldn't really do that, but there you go. Now, I'll do the same at the bottom now. Now, but before, I'll quickly want to just, sorry, I just, I feel like I'm, this is going to take forever. Martin, feel free, uh, I'll stop talking and you can fast forward me out doing this and play some music over the top of me if you want. I just want to do this quickly because I want to change the colour on the stamp because I want to show you actually. I think because this one is so fine, maybe this isn't the one for around the edges because I, I want maximum in, impact and um, I think because this is so fine, it's it's taking time to show up. So um, and you really have to kind of put quite a bit on. Try that again. I can't actually see in the light whether it's stamped. Martin, can you see? Not really, it's not great. Nope. So I've loaded this with the blue. Now there's no blue on this piece yet. I'm trying a different stamp on here because I just didn't like the way the other one was coming out. And that's the thing about stamping. You just have to kind of like keep having a try. Sometimes it works out straight away and you go, I love it. But other times, like I know I really like that already. So that's half the battle. And this colour is 
Gainsborough Blue. Now I'm just going to go along with the Gainsborough Blue and I'm going to do around both doors. So the same stamp that I used here, this way, I put this way going up the sides. And this is another new paint, um, same from the Jubilee range. And this one's called Verde again. It's this sort of colour. It's a really nice green, greeny blue. So this is the colour and this is how the stamp can came out. And I'm just going to take this now and I'm going to do the other side of camera and then we'll start stamping the panels. I just put one in to see how it was going to look. And um, we'll start making the, the top and the bottom work together. So I've got my panel out of the cupboard, just ignore the stable floor and my old green rug that I paint on. Um, that's just, just a par for the course. Now, how am I going to do it? It's going to be... If I need to fill these little bits in, I will. So I'm just going to go up my whole of my panel with the same colour verdigris as I've just done on the side panels and I'm just going to work my way I'm going to see if I can get two out of each one it's kind of awkward because obviously there's gaps where the birds are but I'll push on the bits I can So you get what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and do both my panels like this. Okay, so I went to bed last night. I stopped when it got too late and I had a wee rethink about a couple of things. So I'm going to show you those. You know, sometimes that you have a think and go that. I want the top to match the bottom and the bottom to match the top. And right now they look like they're both going in two separate directions. So first of all, I'm going to do stamp around the doors at the top that will hopefully tie in with the bottom and then we're going to fix the bottom to match the top. So I have here the verdigris colour that I was using yesterday for the sides and this is from the Bohemian Dreamer. It's a kind of paisley pattern, quite a fine little flower stamp. And what I've done is I've taped off the edges of my cutout and I'm going to stamp around them. Um, I'm going to put a bit of detail, maybe a border around this once I've done it. So I'm just going to that wasn't a good smart move to do that on there. Um, right. So you're just going round it, creating a, just a bit of interest, really. I toyed with just doing the kind of, you know, just having the the rough edge, but I want to put I want to put another layer of stamping around it just to give it even more oomph in a different colour. So. This is how I'm choosing to do it. Um, you can see I'm not keeping on, on loading up my um, stamp. You know, I'm looking for kind of thicker detail, thinner detail. Um, and I'm just going to go around both doors like this. So the conclusion I came to last night when I was in bed was this is too much and I'm mixing too many things. These circles here throw it off this sort of Indian vibe that I don't want so I've masked and taped so we have this edge this edge here we're keeping that but we're getting rid of this center panel and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep the texture on it and I'm going to introduce the color that we stamped on the doors up above on my with my my roller if I can just get my roller and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it across it like that and get rid of that I don't mind if some of the red is shining through because that'll give it an, a, like a kind of an aged feel that panel, but I might have to give two coats. Um, see how that covers. And I'm not, I'm not hating that, but yeah, the more I rub it, I'm going to take. So I'm going to just do the exact the same on the other panel while our doors are drying. So using the Oxford ochre, which is the yellow colour, I have stamped another piece of the stamp from the Bohemian Dreamer with the Oxford ochre. And I'm just going to do a kind of border. Now, I'm not really too bothered whether it's straight or not. It's it's just to kind of give it, just to kind of finish it off so it just, just doesn't look like that stamping goes to nowhere. So I'm just going along it like this. And I'm just going to go along both doors and do exactly the same thing.
just like that. The cupboard doors are not glued in yet. I just put them in to have a look at what was going to work on the door. So this is another one from uh, the Bohemian Dreamer. And I'm just going to apply that round the edges of this door. So I'm going to go on and I'm going to do this um, round the edges of my doors. And we've still got quite a lot of things to do. I think the next thing I was kind of like toying with doing is I want to try and do here the external edge gold here and round this room here gold. And this piece up here that I haven't painted, I want it to be gold as well. So I'm just playing around with this gold paint on here. It's going to take two coats, I think, but this is where I kind of tested it. And this is what I'm going to use. So I'll go ahead and do the gold as well. Right, so what I've done off camera is what I said I was going to do. I've painted in all of these edges with the gold. And can I just say the Guild Lane uh, gold is amazing. That's one coat. That's how it looked. It is that good. And so I was thinking about hardware for this piece as well while I was at it. So what I've done is I've also um, used the gold gilding acrylic on these as well so the hardware is all going to match too. Now as you can see here I've kind of slightly highlighted these birds. These panels have still not been glued in. The difference between here and here is quite obvious so I want to just kind of all I've done is I've got a little sponge here with a little bit of gold on it and all I'm doing is I'm just touching around the edges I don't have my glasses on at the moment, so I could be touching around anywhere, but um, just like that, just roughly, just kind of just to give it a little bit of, you know, it, it kind of extra highlight. It's I'm not doing it for tidiness. I'm just doing it because I think it'll look quite good. So that's the how I'm going to do these birds. Now, the next thing we're going to do now, because I think I've spoken about everything else. I've spoken about the stamping, the gold, the panels. We've got to move to the bottom panel next. So I'm going to finish this gold and then we'll set up for the panel at the bottom. I've just put a little bit of this here, this stamp here. It's a kind of a little kind of edgy stamp just around here. I wasn't too careful with it just to kind of finish that piece. Martin was really concerned that that just looked like a square. <laughs> so, so to make Martin happy, I, stayed, so I did a bit of stamping there. Uh, it's funny when you work with your partner. <laughs> So, the MDF birds that were cut out the panels, da da, I have two here that I have painted. And I have painted them the same as the panels up here. And these birds are going to be glued on to here. But before I can glue, Martin, have you got a good camera angle or mm -hmm. do you want to stop? So, but, but before I want to glue them on, I want to do some things to them. Now, can you see... This piece of like sort of paisley pattern here, this part here, I'm hopefully going to try and stamp that on my bird like it's its wing. Now, that's the theory anyway. We'll, we'll see if we can make that a reality. So I'm just going to get a makeup sponge and I've still got some of my blue over here because I'm managing to make quite a mess today and move this one out of the way. So really you just want to get it on the 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 paisley pattern piece. Like that. And this is the good thing about uh, redesign by Prima stamps and you can see through them. So are we going this way or this way? I think I'm going to be unusual go upside down. and go upside down because Martin really freaks out when I do things like this. <laughs> he, 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 like, he likes things to be quite firm. I don't know why. He lives with me. In right. the wind. <laughs> so, I'm making sure that I press that down nicely there and lift it up and that's how it looks. I'm going to do the same, repeat the same on the other ones, but what I want to do is I want to kind of try and find some of the ones that I've previously used. He's laughing at me now. 
he's laughing. So I'm going to use some of this yellow and do something like across here and do like that on there and maybe what other colours do I have? I'm going to need to put an eye on it, I know that and uh, trying to think what else I could put I could try some of this one here um, no I'm, I'm scared that I that I, I ruin it I'm going to go back to this one again and what I'm going to do this time around is I only want the kind of top edge if you know what I mean so just this top piece I hope you can see this just this top piece make sure that I don't have too much on this part here and I'm going to do something like this and I want something sort of fancy around the top so I'm just going to do the ink up the same part again like that and do something something like like it's wearing a sort of like not all on yeah now any little boo-boos wipe away. Sometimes I make more as I go along. I'll get that in a minute. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is I am going to take the gold guild again and this is the sponge that I did the round the edges at the top. I'm just going to offload this over here. This is where why everything always ends up so messy and literally I'm going to do this on the edges I'm a bird. And just do something like Get a black acrylic pen and I'll do an eye. Now the wings are going to be exactly the same. I'm just going to use the same. I keep losing things. <laughs> Here it is. The same blue for my wings. Now these are not going to quite fit on, so it's just going to be a little bit of. I'm going to actually put it onto it. Um, I cannot work this out. It's not going to go, so maybe something like this. And that's how this, and these are, it's, obviously it's tail feathers. So I'm going to go away and do the other, the other bird exactly the same as we as I've done this one, and then we'll get to gluing it on. So using a hard as nails type of glue, um, just, now you can get these craft blanks in any sort of craft lot, shop, so don't be worrying too much if you haven't got things like this. Just have a look on eBay or Amazon or go to a, a large craft shop and they will have craft blanks that you can choose from. So it doesn't have to be birds. You could pick a floral or anything like this. So there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do this. On the top, you can just actually just make it plain wood. You don't have to have the cutouts and you can stencil things on it. And if you live in a large town, Martin was telling me that people now offer a CNC service so you can tell them the measurements, give them the SVG file and they'll cut it out for you. So that's another option as well. So if you don't have a Martin, that's what you can do. So I'm gluing these on and Martin will tell me if these are not straight or not, you can bet your bottom dollar. He's very vocal today. He he's been He's been very vocal trying to tell me like um, you should be, what about this? He said he thought this was a little bit bare, this blue. So. Um, what was going to be doing with that and you know he's been very vocal so what are you doing there though? I'm gluing on my bird no I don't mean to see oh the brushing oh 
What I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning off the glue residue with a little tiny brush. And I have a wet cloth here, eh, even though it's quite ugly looking, uh, just down on the floor so that I can clean off my finger each time we use it so I'm not transporting that onto my piece of furniture. So this is going to be really tricky for me getting this right, but we'll, I, I've got a kind of little bit of an adjustment room, if you know what I mean. So I already can see that I think this is a little bit high. And this comes in a little bit more. Get my brush, clean off my excess. I'm going to be putting some dark wax down in here, so I'm not too bothered about it, but I don't want too much glue residue, like, knocking about. And on to this one. You don't need too much, but you, you know, it's, it's actually probably more ideal, if, if I'm honest, to put these on before you even start the project, but I had actually painted these differently yesterday. I went to bed last night and I really didn't like this piece and this is what I'm, I'm kind of trying to say. You have to trust the process. If you don't like something, keep working on it until you do. And um, I didn't like it last night, but I thought of all the things that I could do to tie it all together. And now I really love it. So it just shows you, you just have to stick with your process. Don't give up because you'll get there in the end. Now, I think that's probably kind of really similar to the one across from it. Maybe this is down a wee bit. And my little brush from the residue just there. As, as you can see, there's a little bit of wiggle room in the beginning to, for you to get it right. Now, Martin also said to me about this blandness here. So what I've got is I've got a just, it's not too much of a difference. And I'm actually applying it with the same green brush so that it's not hugely different. Because we're going to put in some um, stenciling over it. So I'm, just adding a little bit of this to my mix with my roller. I'm applying it to my stamp. And all I'm doing with this is, it's just to give it something, some texture really. I think that was what Martin was trying to see. I'm only using it once, I'm not re-inking it. Just like that. I'm just going to kind of go back over here a minute as well because there's some bugs. Right, so I'm just going to let that dry off. So I'll go just now and then we can do some stenciling on here and then we will be finished. I'm just finishing off the doors now with um, with a little bit of stenciling. This was a sort of um, stencil I had already. So and it just happened that it kind of coordinated with the holes in the lattice up above on the doors. So I'm just doing this. And I'm just kind of like offloading. I'm using a stencil and brush. Um, with this paint, because this isn't paint I've used before, I think maybe a makeup sponge might have been easier than the, the kind of swirly motion that you would normally do with a sort of chalk paint. But um, I have makeup sponges actually beside me, but I've started, so I'm going to finish. Um, I'm just showing you what this is going to look like like that but I'm going to keep this on so that I can do the centre and we'll test out our theory using a makeup sponge just offloading it off camera and let's just see I'll just put the centre in the one on the top and now what Matt and I are going to do is we're going to take off the paper in the mirror and the inside and we're just going to work out whether we want to keep the mirrors. We couldn't actually get the mirrors out without breaking them and we didn't want to do that so um, we'll see if we're going to keep the mirrors or we're going to paint over the mirrors and the next thing you'll see is what we do next. So I'm just dark waxing so this isn't like a chalk paint where like normally with chalk paint what I'm having to do is you know you do your clear wax and then you put your dark wax on so you can move it around but because the surface and this is already self-sealed 
it's moving around nicely and it's actually doing quite a nice job so i'm hoping that you know it does the same as everything else and it just cures onto this because i've never used this paint with i'm just kind of experimenting but all i'm doing now is i'm adding age to it i'm adding age to the doors and then wiping it back just to give it that sort of it's been aged look and it gives it a little bit of depth and a wee bit of character as well if you do this so but it seems to be it seems to be curing on it so i'm like up here in the corners i want these corners to be a little bit darker and then i'm just smoothing that out i mean dark waxing is really your you know what you how you like your piece to look you maybe don't want to dark wax it maybe you're happy with it kind of like looking pristine but that's i'm wanting the mines to look like it's a little bit aged so where i'm looking for age i'm just i'm doing this um so that's what i'm doing here i'm just going to go on and finish this and then we can get on to the um how we're going to work out the inside so i'm just applying some dark wax up the top just to kind of age off up this edge that's where all this sort of dark would sit in it up on this ledge and I'm being kind of like specific we are I want it to kind of like to highlight it and I'm pretty impressed so far I'm really quite impressed with the paint um I really am it's I'm going to be doing my next piece is a very textured piece so really it'll be the crunch whether it works for me or not because I have to paint with a lot of texture and this just happened to be a piece that that, 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 that wasn't like that so um but yeah, um, that's me sort of kind of like finished all the dark wax in now and we'll we'll get it opened up and we'll see what we're going to do with the inside. Finished. So just want to talk quick. I'm going to try and be really quick and not talk too much, but I just want to talk about processes when you're painting furniture. I went to bed last night and I abandoned ship in the, sh in the stable. I, d I didn't like where this piece was going i wasn't sure about the colors i picked i wasn't sure about um the overall design the concept it wasn't working the stamping didn't match the top I woke up this morning with a whole new attitude came out fixed the stamping at the bottom and suddenly you know just by trusting my processes it came together and can i just say i absolutely love it it is great it's a lovely piece of furniture and it was your 80s bog standard nobody wants anymore so I've done something that you know has been saved from truly saved from landfill now let's just talk about the uh, Jubilee paints um, from Guild Lane so far we've I've been able to establish that you can blend it you can stamp on it it's self leveling so I have a silky smooth finish it seals it's got a sealer built in uh, you can heat it with a heat gun, you can add wax to it. So as a, as a, you know, I kind of sit here today, I'm going my usual paint brand and this paint brand totally on a par. Uh, in the future, I'm going to really try and work out how to put some textures in. So that'll be a piece in the future. Now, I painted my hardware with the Guild Lane, um, Lane um, Gilding Acrylic and it's came out lush as well. Now, there's something quite exciting about this piece. I ended up, I kept the mirrors in. Now you're going to see Martin on the other side of the camera because the mirrors don't reflect, but he can give you a wee wave. I just want you to, I just, I'm going to stand up and I'm just going to show you the inside because it is. So what I did was I just stamped the inside of these doors so that they reflected on the inside of the piece. We kept the glass and we got, Martin got the light working. It's an optical illusion, this piece. It looks square, but it's actually a corner cupboard. It's triangular, but it's just, just came out so nice. It's just so, I don't know. I love it. So I have been Lel for me by Marley. If you like it, um, tell me why you like it. Share it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, please, please, please um, think of subscribing and share it so other people can see our videos. And uh, what else have I got to say? I think that's everything. So uh, I'll see you in our next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.